Hi everybody, my name's Tim Matthews with the Museum of American Speed. I'm so glad to have you joining me as always. Uh, of course, if you look around, uh, you can tell I'm not in my typical uh, surroundings, which is the museum where I'd be uh, telling you about something cool and historic, but instead, I'm here at home. I'm like many of you, I'm, I'm hunkered down uh, because of COVID-19 and I can't believe it's been three weeks already. Uh, so in the spirit of uh, keeping things interesting, if you're like me and behind the computer and, and are interested in what your hot rod buddies are doing, uh, we thought we would uh, take a look around my garage. I'll show you my hot rod and uh, some of the things I have hanging around in my workspace. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go check it out. All right, come on in and make yourselves at home. It's a little cramped in here and, and way too uh, cluttered, but uh, we'll look around a little bit and I can show you some of the stuff I've been working on. I learned a long time ago that uh, if I waited for the perfect shop to get work done, I'd probably be waiting for a long, long time. So I decided that uh, my two car garage was gonna have to suffice. And in the grand scheme of things, I like to imagine that a lot of people built cool hot rods and two car garages, especially during the golden age of hot rodding when uh, everybody was doing it and old Ford parts were cheap. Uh, so, <laughs> so here I am and, and I've been uh, liking this setup quite a bit because I can sneak out here even if I work on the car for 10 minutes at a time, uh, I, I can get things done on it. Uh, my wife sometimes will peek her head out of that little door and ask me if I'm hungry. Uh, of course, uh, the clutter drives her a little crazy in here. So uh, even if I invite her in to uh, hang out, uh, she'll say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> so anyway, uh, here I am with my little hot rod and we'll talk about this car a little bit. If you've tuned into some of my other videos, uh, I've talked about this car an awful lot uh, for Speedway Motors and some of the parts that we sell. Uh, I try to build a car with as many old parts as I can. So if I can find it in a junkyard or find it at a swap meet, that's my preference. Uh, but there's a lot of new stuff on here too to make it reliable and just parts that you can't find uh, just uh, laying around anymore. So I like to build traditional cars and, and this particular Model A is built the way I'd hope my grandpa uh, would have built it. Uh, so it's, uh, it's done with uh, parts that are kind of uh, dating back to the 50s. It has a 241 Red Ram Hemi out of a 54 Dodge Coronet. It, uh, it has original 32 Ford uh, grill shell. You know, all these parts have history to me. Uh, you know, when I select the parts for my car, you know, I try to select things that have some kind of cool history uh, to them, you know. So uh, the grill insert, for instance, in, in this car, uh, this came from my, my grandpa, uh, you know, it, so it's been around a long time. And, and the, grill in, the grill shell itself, rather, uh, came from a good friend, Eric Zausner. I, when I told him I was putting an aftermarket grill shell on my car, uh, he, he mailed this one to me and, and it about tipped me over. I couldn't believe uh, what a nice gift that was and, and so thankful. The headlights are 36 Ford headlights, also from a dear friend, uh, Buick Finn drums on uh, juice backing plates. Uh, I cast the Breeze Cool scoops myself from an old mold. Um, just uh, a lot of different stories on the car. Uh, the exhaust, uh, the headers are uh, still looking a little rough, but I built them myself right here in my garage. Uh, they're made with uh, 36 Ford uh, drive shaft tubes uh, that were sent to me uh, from French Lake Auto Parts up in Minnesota, which uh, uh, kudos to them. Uh, but this is just so much fun, right? It's fun to build a car, uh, you know, with, with so many different parts and trying to source the parts. Uh, the cowl for this car, that uh, still has my name written on it. It used to sit in the call center at Speedway Motors. Uh, I bought it and then we brought, I brought it into work so we could test uh, windshield posts on it for uh, a brand new stainless steel uh, chopped windshield posts. So uh, this thing laid in the call center for many years. I always dreamt about building a car out of it. And uh, the list goes on and on. You know, that engine I pulled out of a 54 Dodge Coronet that was uh, in a field uh, right outside of Lincoln here. And uh, there she is. It had all the frost plugs blown out of it, but I took it all apart and, and remachined everything and, and it runs like a champ. Uh, this particular car I just took on its maiden voyage. My, my daughter and I took it uh, right down the cul-de-sac. It, uh, it was a lot of fun and no parts fell off. Uh, didn't catch on fire, so, <laughs> so, and so far so good. Right now I, I took the seat back out and I'm, I'm working on the floor pans. We're uh, 
trying to get those uh, all figured out. So I'm making cardboard patterns uh, so I can cut the wood for those. Uh, the dash, as you can see, is a 1934 Ford dash. Uh, it's got some old school gauges in it, 50 Ford steering wheel, uh, 49 Ford F1 pickup steering column and steering box that I uh, machined a little bit to, to make it work for this car. I guess the list just keeps on going. You know, the body, as I said, it came from about 17 different uh, swap meets, uh, but I was able to piece it all together and, and get it square. The tail lights are kind of cool. Those are 50 Pontiac tail lights with early uh, Chrysler reverse light lenses in them because I like that fluted uh, look and uh, built those tail lights myself. Uh, 40 Ford uh, steel wheels and some really nice tires from Speedway Motors uh, to kind of figure it all out. But there she is. If anybody has any questions about my old jalopy, I know it's rough and it has a long way to go. It'll probably make some of you guys laugh out there. Uh, but uh, I sure have enjoyed building it. You know, when you do everything yourself, you learn an awful lot. Uh, that's for sure. My garage is a mess. <laughs> it's a, I've got a little bit of everything in here. It's uh, kind of a collection of things that make me happy. I've got a couple old BMX bikes. These are just part of uh, my BMX bike collection. I, I love old BMX bikes. I'm an old racer from back in the day. I have some uh, leftover parts here, my old ex extra dummy uh, Hemi that I used for uh, setting everything up in my car, some model airplanes, uh, just you, you name it. I just, uh, I just have a little bit of everything. If it's from the 80s, I love it. So if any of you guys out there uh, uh, like old uh, boom boxes, uh, let me know. I mean, we could, uh, we could play some ZZ Top on any one of those. I, I just love those things. Speaking of COVID-19, uh, you might be interested in seeing where I'm working from these days. This is my little workspace in the corner of my small garage, and you'd be surprised how many uh, questions uh, come into me at that little computer, and, and I'm able to uh, keep the business going uh, of the museum and, and some answer some technical questions at the same time. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, uh, even though it's a very strange time uh, to be able to work here in my garage and, and keep things going. Uh, these are all my uh, BMX uh, trophies from back in the day. Uh, if any of you raced in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I might have uh, I might have uh, raced against you uh, back in the day. Yeah, there's even a picture of a young Tim Matthews right there uh, lining up with all the other big boys. So though that was the that was the best time of my life uh, racing in the '80s. But it gives you a little idea of some of the other stuff I'm interested in. Uh, just have a little, little bit of everything in my garage. And someday uh, my wife is going to have a great time auctioning all this stuff off. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. Uh, my son seems like he's pretty interested in this stuff too. I know you all have projects out there, uh, whether it's a $100,000 car, an old beater, a uh, hot rod like mine. We'd love to see uh, what you have in your garage, uh, some of the stuff that you're interested in. Uh, so share that with us. It really means a lot, and we'd love to see it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say just in closing really quick is a huge thank you to everyone out there that's working hard, uh, that's keeping the world going uh, in spite of this crazy time. You know, all the healthcare workers that are taking care of sick folks. I think about uh, people out there every single day. So huge thank you. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is to our customers, to people that are buying parts, uh, that are working on hot rods like mine, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, you know, we keep the parts rolling out to you because we know how important this stuff is uh, to you. It's great therapy for me uh, to work on my old hot rod, and uh, you know, we're here for you uh, when you need the parts. Uh, you can be sure we'll get them out to you. So thanks for that. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is just that I appreciate you coming out, hanging out with me in my garage for a while, uh, hearing me talk about my old beater, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll get together again uh, real soon. Uh, until then, be safe. I'm going to go back to work and uh, finish my floorboards, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today.